They enjoyed a certain material well-being, but the interiors of their houses, celebrated by a generation of Dutch painters, suggest restraint and discretion. The officers of these ships of exploration and trade would return from their long voyages, share in the goods they had acquired, and discuss the wonders they had encountered. Holland prospered in its freedom of thought. In Italy, Galileo had announced other worlds. Giordano Bruno had speculated on intelligent life elsewhere. For this, they were made to suffer brutally. But in Holland, the astronomer Christian Huygens, who strongly supported both ideas, was showered with honors. Christian was the son of Constantine Huygens. The elder Huygens distinguished himself as a master diplomat of the age, a man of letters, a close friend and translator of the English poet John Donne. Constantine Huygens was also an accomplished composer and musician. It was Constantine who had discovered a young painter named Rembrandt van Rijn, in several of whose works he subsequently appears. He opened the doors of his house to artists, musicians, writers, statesmen, and scientists. A feast of goods and ideas from all over the world awaited them. The philosopher Descartes, who visited him here, said of Constantine Huygens, I could not believe that a single mind could occupy itself with so many things and acquit itself so well in all of them. He even excelled at the art of parenthood. He was a tender and loving father. His son Christian flourished in this rich environment, demonstrating extraordinary talents for languages, drawing, law, science, engineering, mathematics, and music. The world is my country, he said. Science, my religion. Light was the motif of the age, the symbolic enlightenment of freedom of thought and religion, the light that suffused the paintings of the time, and light as an object of scientific study. The microscope was invented in Holland at this time and became a drawing room curiosity. Its inventor was a friend of Christian Huygens, a man named Anton Leeuwenhoek. The first microscopes were developed from magnifying glasses used by drapers to examine the quality of cloth. Leeuwenhoek and Huygens are the grandfathers of much of modern medicine. Because, to his amazement, Leeuwenhoek discovered the universe in a drop of water, the microbes, which he described as animalcules, and thought cute. Leeuwenhoek and Huygens were among the first people to see human sperm cells, a hitherto hidden microcosm of the human life cycle. Leeuwenhoek had discovered the microbial world. Huygens had argued from his telescopic observations that Mars was another world, and probably an inhabited one. What a waste of a planet, he thought, if Mars were barren. 
so the Viking search for microbes on Mars can be traced directly back to Huygens and Leeuwenhoek in 17th century Holland. The telescope and the microscope developed here represent an extension of human vision to the realms of the very small and the very large. Our observations of atoms and galaxies were launched in this time and place. From the bending of light through a lens, Huygens advanced the idea that light was a kind of wave. He ground and polished lenses for the successively larger telescopes he constructed. Although, it did take him a time to figure out how to use them properly. Huygens was the first person to see a surface feature on the planet Mars. He was the first person to speculate that Venus is completely covered with clouds. He was the first person to understand the nature of the rings of Saturn. Saturn is surrounded, he wrote, by a thin, flat ring which nowhere touches the body of the planet. His discoveries with the telescope would by themselves have ensured his place in the history of human accomplishment. Huygens was the discoverer of Titan, the largest moon of Saturn. The immense size and changing clouds of Jupiter entranced him. Astronomers, as well as navigators, need accurate clocks to time the movement of the heavens. Huygens was the inventor of many precision timepieces, including the pendulum clock. To illustrate the sun-centered universe of Copernicus, he built computers that reproduced the clockwork of the heavens from Mercury to Saturn. The machines he designed, he signed. Christian Huygens, inventor. He was delighted that the Copernican system was widely accepted in everyday life in Holland and acknowledged by all astronomers except those, he wrote, who were a bit slow-witted or under the superstitions imposed by merely human authority. Across the sea of space, the stars are other suns, a point which Huygens appreciated perfectly well. He reasoned that if our planetary system involved the sun and planets going around it, that those other suns should likewise have a retinue of planets going around them, and also that many of the other planets were inhabited. He set forth these conclusions in a remarkable book bearing the triumphant title, The Celestial Worlds Discovered. The subtitle is Conjectures concerning the inhabitants, plants, and productions of the worlds in the planets. He wrote this book sometime shortly before his death in the year 1690 in this study. By and large, Huygens imagined that the environments of the other planets, and also the inhabitants of the other planets, were pretty much like those of 17th century Europe. I wonder if he imagined travel to those other worlds which he had been the first to examine close up through the telescope. 